What's up everyone? This is Brad from iBuyPower. Today we'll be doing a short video talking about how to upgrade the power supply in your iBuyPower desktop computer. Before we begin, there's a few tools you may need to prepare. Uh, some zip ties for cable management, a Phillips head screwdriver, and something to cut zip ties. Now this procedure may differ a little bit depending on your power supply and depending on your case, but we should be able to cover most of the combinations right now. Before we open our case up, I want to cover some of the hardware that we're going to be working with today. Um, now on the table in front of me here, I have an ATX power supply. There's a few different versions of these. This one happens to be semi-modular, uh, so some of the cables are permanently attached to the power supply. Other ones you're going to be plugging in yourself. Uh, there's also fully modular versions such as this and non-modular versions where all of the cables are always connected to the power supply. Moving on to the cables themselves, the ones that you're going to need to familiarize yourself with are the large 24-pin motherboard power connector. Uh, this sometimes comes as a 20 plus 4-pin where there's an extra little 4-pin hanging off there that attaches to it uh, or it can be 24 all-in-one connector. Uh, there's also the CPU power cable, sometimes this is labeled as the EPS connector. Uh, this will sometimes be four plus four, so two four pin connectors, or a single eight pin connector. For other accessories, you have your video card or PCIe power cable. Uh, these will usually be either six pin, six plus two pin, or eight pin joined together. You also have your accessory power cables, so these are usually referred to as Molex. They're four pin, you use these for fans, LEDs, uh, other kinds of extra stuff in the case. And you have your SATA or serial ATA power connectors. Uh, these are gonna be used for hard drives, SSDs, and some newer peripherals like LED controllers uh, will use these as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the power supply out of our computer. I'm gonna take off both of your side panels. Uh, remember to set them somewhere safe. You're not gonna trip on them or have them break. Uh, before you begin, I recommend grabbing your smartphone and uh, taking a few pictures of the wiring inside the case. You may need to refer back to them later, and if you already have your power supply out, you may not remember where everything was supposed to plug in. It's nice to have that picture at the end. Now, in most cases, you're gonna have this here, the power supply shroud. The power supply is gonna be hidden under this. Um, you can't actually remove this from most cases, so the way that you're gonna access it is actually from the other side. So if you look at the back of the PC, you can actually see the power supply here. So what we're gonna be doing is undoing a lot of this wiring and pulling the various cables out until we've freed all the cables from the power supply. I'm gonna start with some of the larger connectors here on the front. You have your video card power connectors here. These larger connectors, such as the video card power, the motherboard power, and the CPU power, they all have clips on them that you're gonna to need to squeeze to be able to remove them. The video card power usually comes out pretty easily. The motherboard one can be a little bit more stubborn, so you may have to wiggle it back and forth a little bit to get that out. In some cases like this, your CPU liquid cooler might get in the way of releasing the CPU power connector up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo this from the back of the case. Now, once I've loosened the cooler, I'm gonna let this hang down a little bit. Uh, one of the things to make sure of is that you're not letting this hang by its fan cable. It's okay to be suspended by the tubes. It's okay to rest it a little bit on the back of your graphics card, but don't let it hang just by the fan cable because that could break. Now that this is out of the way, I do have a little bit more space to go in here and access the CPU power connector. So I'm gonna unplug that. Okay, now that these cables are free, I'm gonna pull some of them through to the other side. While I work on this, I'm gonna put one of the screws back into this rear radiator uh, just to make sure that it doesn't fly around while I'm working on it. Just keep it a little bit more secure. And flipping around to the other side of the case again, you can see here I've retrieved the CPU power connector and I can also get the motherboard power connector out. Now I'm gonna start clipping some of the zip ties uh, that hold these cables in place. When you're doing this, be very careful not to cut the actual wires uh, from the power supply cables, just make sure you're cutting the plastic of the zip ties. You may come across things such as this LED controller uh, that you want to kind of get out of the way as you work with the system. Again, if you're going to unplug anything, get out your phone, 
take a picture of it. That way you remember that it was plugged in there. And what we're working towards is eventually getting all of the cables from the power supply unplugged from their components and have these cables freely out on your work surface. Sometimes for things like hard drives, when you need to unplug the SATA cable from them, you will have to unscrew the drive to get access to that cable. You can see here on the other side, we have our SSD. If I unscrew that, I can remove the power cable and pull it back through. Once everything is free, what you're gonna wanna make sure you're able to do is basically see all the wires from your power supply here free out on the table. So they're not gonna get caught on anything when we remove it. And depending on the case, some power supplies are gonna be retrieved this way out the back of the case. Other times they're gonna come out this way from the side behind the motherboard. Uh, for this case here, we have this bracket on the back that connects the power supply to the back of the case. So we're gonna undo that. And then we're gonna slowly pull the power supply out the back of the case, again, taking care that none of these cables are getting caught on anything on the way out. Rotate this. Okay, cool, we got our power supply out. Again, our case has this bracket on the back that we will have to remove and attach to the new power supply. Okay, so we got this bracket, we're gonna save this, set our old power supply aside, and grab the new one. And remember, since this is a semi-modular power supply, we're gonna have to grab all the cables that we need for this build from our bundle of modular cables. Uh, so we already have the 24 pin and the eight pin for the CPU. We are gonna need some connectors for our graphics card power and for a Molex connector for our LED controller, which should be here, and a SATA power for our SSD. Usually the power supply will come with some kind of instructions that'll tell you like which types of cables plug in where. These ones are keyed nicely so that there's really only one way to do it. So when it comes to the PCIe or graphics card power connectors, most power supplies will chain two of these connectors onto one cable. If your graphics card requires two sets of eight pin power plugs, we usually recommend if your power supply comes with another one of these cables to use both of them. It should be fine to use the single one and just chain them together if you're not running your card beyond its factory specifications, if you're not overclocking, driving it harder than it should be. But if you are gonna add a little bit more power, we recommend using both of these cables. Now we have our power supply prepped. Uh, we can start putting the new power supply back into our case. I'm gonna attach the bracket that the old power supply used to the new power supply. Get our case and start by feeding the cables back through the hole on the back of the case. Uh, take note of the orientation of the fan on your power supply. Uh, in most modern cases, this fan is gonna face downward so that the power supply can draw air up through the bottom of the case. Okay, so our power supply is installed. Now we just have to run all the cables back to where they started. Again, if you need to, refer back to the photos that you took earlier uh, so that you know where all of these cables need to go. As a general rule of thumb, you wanna run the larger cables first. Uh, so that means the big 24 pin motherboard power connector first and then follow up with the smaller ones. It's a little bit easier to run the smaller cables around the larger cables than the other way around. Once you have some of the cables roughly where you want them, you're gonna wanna start cable managing them with your zip ties. Uh, so most cases will have little tie down points, you know, here and there around the back of the motherboard tray to give you nice spots where you can grab your zip ties. And get them nice and secured down. Now this does two things. One, obviously it makes the wiring behind the motherboard tray look a lot better. 
uh, but it also uh, makes it easier to close the side panel again, you know, once you're ready to put the whole case back together. All right, once you've got everything all plugged in and nice and tidy, you can go ahead and get your side panel, pop it back on, and you're back in business. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you found this video helpful. As always, uh, if we missed something or you have some other questions, feel free to leave a comment, hit us up on social media, try to get in touch, and we'll try to get back to you. See you next time.